Hello chess friends and welcome to Azado's chess channel and welcome to my basics in chess series. So in this series we follow opening principles, middle game strategies and the end game strategies. Today we'll talk about some middle game strategies again. Today we'll talk about the power of the bishop pair in the middle game because the bishop pair is uh, one of the most important things that you should realize in your positions. Uh, giving up the bishop pair in an early stage of the game is very dangerous. So when you want to do that, when you maybe give up a bishop for a knight, at least uh, you have to do it for some reason maybe you do it because you want to weaken your opponent's pawn structure maybe you want to double up your opponent's pawns maybe you can create further weaknesses but when you don't uh, have to do that when you don't uh, see clear uh, weaknesses in your opponent's position uh, my recommendation is not to give up your bishop pair in an early stage of the game so try to hang on to your bishops try to uh, simply create attacking formations with your bishops and uh, that's why I think uh, the bishop pair is one of the most important uh, strategical elements that you should really recognize in your own chess game. So uh, today I wanted to show you how powerful this uh, bishops can be. Uh, the first instructive game, it's a game played by Alexander Alekhi against uh, Max Juve. Here uh, you can pause the video always um, and try to find the best continuation, uh, try to get use of your bishop pair. Uh, in order to get uh, your bishop pair working you have to of course um, participate with other pieces also in the in the attack uh, as i said try to pause the video and try to find the best next move for white in the in the last move uh, max juve played the move here uh, knight to e5 which was a mistake there is one problem uh, in black's position black doesn't have good defenders around the king so i hope you can find the best next move in order to get this bishops rolling to get them into the game uh, basically what black has done here is a uh, sort of a blocking system on dark squares so black is trying and not to allow this bishop on b2 to create this very important checkmate threat on g7 uh, but uh, here alexander arkin finds uh, the best move i think he played the move knight to g5 uh, threatening immediately um uh, this checkmate on h7 or this dangerous check on h7 of course it's preventable uh, with the move f6 like max juve played it but there is now another problem in um, black's position because after the move f6 uh, why black has uh, weakened the light squares here the light square diagonal is now an object of white's attack and now we should always uh, consider the option to get our bishop into the game so the problem is also that uh, this knight on e5 is the key defender of the square c4 so that's why here um, uh, alexander alihin took out the defender bishop takes e5 you see how these uh, bishops are working uh, very well together because now we're using one bishop in order to get this other bishop uh, uh, better into the game after uh, here uh, f takes g5 if you take of course uh, bishop takes e5 then you see bishop to c4 is very dangerous although you can try maybe something like king to h8 but now knight to f7 is a serious threat you lose the rook immediately queen takes f7 you see you have to even give up uh, your queen and after bishop takes f7 it's game over so in the game f takes g5 was played and now bishop to c4 anyway and in this uh, position um max you will resign because if you try something like bishop to e6 then of course we could simply take bishop takes e6 queen takes e6 and now queen to g7 deflecting the queen from the defense of this uh, very important g7 square so you see how uh, max juve used all, both of these bishops uh, in order to get his attack first with this uh, checkmate threat on h7 but now uh, getting rid of this defender of the sniper on e5 um, uh, here um, uh, alexander alihin had a great game so here is a game uh, played by the uh, adolf anderson against uh, jean dufresne uh, in the last move uh, here you see um the frame tried queen to f3 uh, creating a very dangerous checkmate threat but here uh, you see how uh, the bishops are really powerful because they have really some great attacking possibilities this bishop has a great diagonal this bishop on uh, a3 has also great diagonal the queen is indirectly aiming uh, here uh, against black king black king is in danger because black king is still in the center and here uh, adolf anderson played one of the 
best attacking brilliances in chess history he played rook takes e7 after knight takes e7 we have queen to d7 a very nice check uh, you basically have to take it and now uh, try to pause the video and try to find the best next move uh, it's a forced checkmate sequence in three moves uh, of course Adolf Anderson has calculated all of that before here bishop to f5 uh, double check you have only um, several choices but whatever you do you get checkmated here uh, king to e8 was played but now bishop to d7 after king to f8 you see bishop to e7 and it's checkmate it's game over so you see uh, how dangerous these bishops are working uh if you if your opponent hasn't secured the king uh, here even a queen sacrifice was possible and uh, adolf anderson really one of the best tacticians back in the 19th century uh really it was uh, one of the best best attacking uh, chess games in, uh, in chess history so let's see now another example here it's a game played by uh, michael adams with the white pieces against uh, william staunton uh, both of these players were great theoreticians in chess uh, the staunton gambit is a very famous gambit line i think uh, here um, staunton tried the move knight to c5 uh, the idea behind this move is of course if you take knight takes c5 uh, then you get checkmated on g2 again try to pause the video and uh, find the best next move uh, it's a great sacrifice i think uh, which paralyzes all of uh, black's pieces uh, the black pieces will be useless in the continuation of the game and here michael adams uh, finds a very nice rook sacrifice rook takes b7 and now after uh, knight takes b7 now we see that these bishops are aiming here um on the, on the uh, castled king uh, the problem from black's perspective is that uh, black doesn't have any defenders in front of the king only the pawns are uh, defending uh, black's king whenever you see these types of positions um, you should always consider some tactical shots whenever you see that your opponent doesn't have maybe a knight on f6 maybe a bishop to g6 or similar ideas whenever your opponent doesn't have a minor piece uh, in front of the king you should always always consider the option to do a tactical shot so uh, again pause the video now the position is much more simplified than the first one try to find the best next move it's not so easy to see it's it is again a sacrifice i hope you can find this best next move it's the move knight to f6 uh, which is a forcing move of course uh, that's the most important thing when you play tactics uh, when you play aggressive moves uh, the moves have to uh, cause some troubles in your opponents that must be sort of a, a forcing moves because now uh, black has to react after g takes f6 we have queen to g4 you have only one square you cannot cover with the queen of course on g5 because the bishop is aiming here and you see now how powerful these bishops can be after uh, king to h8 here uh, white right queen to h4 the threat is of course this very annoying check on f6 and then bishop to h6 in the game f5 uh, played by uh, by uh, staunton and then queen to f6 we have uh, king to g8 and now bishop to h6 here bishop to uh, e5 was played but now uh, queen takes f5 and you cannot prevent anymore the checkmate now this bishop is working because now again the pawn structure is further weakened and you see how dangerous these bishops can be although uh, white gave up the exchange gave up this rook for this bishop on b7 but uh, after that it was a real clear and attacking uh, brilliancy here played by uh, michael Ed. so let's see now another example here it's a game played by victor bologan with the white pieces uh, here is the problem um, black is a pawn up uh here black also tried a very annoying attack with the move knight to b4 attacking the queen uh, again try to find the best next move uh, it's not so easy to see i think immediately but uh, if you want to stay hang on to your bishop pair when you want to activate him very very nicely uh, this sacrifice uh, that uh, victor bologan played in the continuation of the game is sort of a must move because if you for instance retreat uh, i think black can regroup a little bit black can try 
some uh, uh, bishop to b7 ideas maybe uh, even knight to f6 bishop to f6 even some bishop to d6 if the position allows it maybe kicking away the uh, knight is possible f5 well many many p possibilities for black so that's why you shouldn't allow your opponent in this types of position to breathe you have to play active moves and in the game uh, here instead of this queen to b1 um, victor bologan played the move rook to d7 sacrificing the rook for the knight after uh, queen takes d7 now you see the queen comes into the game very actively bishop to f6 is not an option because we can simply take take and uh, there's no way you can prevent any more uh, this checkmate threats if you try queen to g4 then you get checkmated here on h so the battery on on um, uh, the dark horse is the main attacking element here on white's position uh, in the game after um, uh, queen to c3 uh, bologan's opponent tried queen to g4 and here uh, victor bologan finds again a very very cool move again try to pause the video take your time uh, uh, the problem is of course the defense of the queen of this uh, square uh, g7 here bologan finds of course a very very cool move knight from f to g5 cutting off this um, uh, connection between the queen and the pawn now queen takes g5 had to be played uh, the pro again you cannot do uh, any better moves if you try again this bishop to f6 idea then we can again take and again with the same attacking possibility on h so in the game uh, here um, B bologan's opponent simply took queen takes g5 knight takes g5 and now bishop to f6 but now not a problem queen to f3 uh covers everything because after bishop to b2 we have knight to f2 uh, knight to f7 uh with some discovered attack possibilities here on h6 b5 was played knight takes on h6 king to h7 and now simply taking out the rook and uh, in this position it's game over okay you can try bishop b takes c4 but now uh, queen to c5 and in this position uh, black resign because uh, the knight is trapped and also we have some attacking possibilities here on light squares so we can regroup we can uh, uh, come with our rook into the game so it's game over you need many many moves uh, to connect all of your pieces here from black's perspective and in this position uh, black resigned so let's see now another example of this power of the bishop pair here it's a game played by arnold denker with the white pieces here is a chess puzzle for you to solve at home i think uh, you can solve it immediately uh, it is a little bit obvious but again i'm pointing out the power of the bishop pair uh, this bishop uh, on d4 is a little bit blocked out uh, by its own pawn but you can still make i think some progress you can make this pawn rolling and uh, because if you get this uh, dark square bishop into the game it's game over on the other hand only uh, black has only this defender the knight on h5 uh, in front of the king so this is not enough uh, here uh, i think you can solve this uh, puzzle very very easily because uh, i think if you have watched this um, examples before you get this move uh, very very uh, effectively and now um, there's nothing to do i think for black so okay uh i hope you realize these ideas i hope you enjoyed this video meanwhile you can watch my other uh, basics in chess videos from the series with some more uh, opening principles middle game strategies and the end game strategies and you can also watch my chess tactics and chess puzzles videos in which i show you all of the possible tactical motifs that can happen to you in a chess game see you soon with some more videos and chess is the best of course